okay, because I'm still going to give you three tips, right? But two of them I'm going to do really quickly because I want to spend longer on the third one. Okay, so the first tip I'm going to give you is time. OK, add in some time and you can use a timer on your I'm trying to make it techy here. You can use a timer on your screen or you can use one of the egg timers. Um, and we've just bought a giant egg timer. Um, but give yourself time. So when you're asking children a question, just say we're just going to go into thinking time. Now, a lot of people say to me, oh, that's only for SEN, though. And then we've got all these kids that, are, that will be bored. It's not true. OK, you can be the brightest person in the world and have thinking time. OK, so pose a question and put in thinking time. OK, but that will help your children with special needs. OK, right. So that's the first one. The second one is I say this all the time because it's true is visuals. Please put visuals on. Imagine home alone as a word on the screen that you've just seen. And then imagine home alone as the picture. Obviously, apart from Buki, who's never seen that, so so it would be completely pointless for her. But usually, okay, so if you've got Macbeth, put Macbeth up. If you're doing science, put a science image up of the word, okay? Always put an image up of where you want your children to be. Okay, so there are two, two images, that um, two things to do really quickly. The third one is memory. Now, memory is a complete nightmare for many children, okay, including myself. So if you've got ADHD, if you've got dyslexia, if you've got um, memory difficulties generally, that, then that is going to be difficult. And, of course, the lovely Michael Gove in my, has got rid of all the things that would help people with poor memories, although I've noticed he's brought them back this year, not him. Um, the government have brought them back, haven't they? They've said, oh, we can have memory aids because it's COVID. Thanks very much. For those people that have memory difficulties, they would have been saying, why did you take them away in the first place? Anyway, I'll get off my um, soapbox. And so I'm going to give you some memory strategies. The first one I'm going to do, which I always do with Harris. So if there's any Harris teachers there that have seen me in the ITE programme, you'll know this one. Um, but I'm going to do it with phonological awareness. OK, so phonological awareness is the ability to reflect upon and manipulate the sound structure of words. Right. How on earth do we make that multisensory for people to remember? OK, so phonological awareness is the ability to reflect upon. Here's my mirror. So it's the ability to reflect upon and manipulate so I've, luckily I've, I've got three girls so I've got lots of hair bands so I manipulate okay the sound that's my ear although it's under my turkey hat structure okay I've got my lovely lego head here and I've got a couple of bits of lego in here okay so the sound structure okay so you can put your lego together of words OK, so you put that all together. Phonological awareness is the ability to reflect upon and, oh, my God, I've lost my elastic band. And manipulate, pretend I've got my elastic band, the sound structure of words. OK, now, if you put all that together, put images up on the board, if you can have the real manipul manip manipulatives, then it's much better. But if you put those all together and get them to do the actions as well, it's a complete multisensory experience. And those things will trigger their memory. So for when they've got to remember those things, that's what you need to do. Now, Buki has given me a challenge. OK, and I would like you to um, all help me with these. But I've got some physics ones. And I'm going to tell you what it is, and then I'm going to discuss this a little bit. It's work done equals fourth times distance. OK, now, first, I'm going to tell you what I did with that. So firstly, I kept thinking about those songs, you know, like work, work, work. I'm a terrible singer. You probably don't even know what that song is. But so now I've got this, this work song in my head. OK, OK. And then I've got a tick. So I'm work, work, done. OK, so that's the first bit. OK, then it's equals. I'll remember that because I know it's a formula. All right. And then it's fourth. And I, if I had a lightsaber, I wish I did, because I used to have one five years ago when my son was younger. <laughs> but there is in the tip. Um, but then I'd have fourth. OK, times distance. OK, now I was thinking about distance. So we could use a ruler. I'm crashing to the floor. We could use a ruler for distance. 
Or for me, I'm a bit more, I'm thinking of doing my distances on my 5K jog. Okay, so I've got work, work, done, equals zoom, 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 times distance, 5K. Okay, and that's how I've remembered um, that challenge. What do you think, Buki? I am impressed. I think I might be using that zoom, zoom. <laughs> 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 I did want to, and Bookie, please, please join in. I did want to, if I've got time, just to quickly um, talk about that, though, because when Bookie sent work done to me, I was completely, I was like, I don't even understand what you're talking about. What, what? I don't even know what that means, that formula. Because for me, work done is something completed. Okay, work is schoolwork or employment. Um, and then, you know, work done means it's completed and it's finished. And so how on earth does that fit? I, don't, I didn't get it at all. And Bookie tried to explain it to me. <laughs> I still don't think I get it. Okay, because, so I think I might, I just remember that some of your students, they might be able to memorize these things. So I can now do work done equals force times distance, but I don't know what it means. Okay, now, as Bookie would tell you, it's actually quite good to memorize these things first. Then decide, Then you can start explaining what they are. So I would um, talk about that with, with your pupils, that it's okay to memorise it first. But please don't forget that there'll be people like me in the room going, still don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you were nodding a lot when we were talking about this, weren't you, Buki? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. That, and just to say, you know, I'm not the... I, I, I'm quite bright. I'm, you know, I'm doing a master's and I'm a teacher and I've got a degree, but... There will be, you know, it's not just um, children that don't understand things or all things that, that might not understand these. You know, you can be a very spiky profile like me and understand really complex things in other areas, but just not get that. Once I've got it, though, I'll remember it forever. And I'll remember that formula forever now because I've been thinking how to create it. So it's a really good one to do with your pupils as well. Get them to think of their own. Brilliant, Jill. Thank you very Thank much. You. We have some lovely feedback in the chat as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Jill Berry's in there. I love Jill. Uh, <laughs> Jules Dobby, the turkey is perfect. Uh, we've got Emma Hinsky saying your, your tips are fab and easy to use. Many thanks. Kat Kinshaw uh, joining us later to present. She's loving the multi sensory approach. Um, Jules was so engaging. Great tips. Uh, brilliant stuff. But I'm going to have to be that horrible person who says we're a bit over time. So thank you very Bye. much, Jules. Hi, Turkey Family, we'll be going. Bye. Thank you so much.